third, fourth, and fifth grade. Hello. Welcome to week three. Now this week, as you probably saw on the website, is laughing week because I feel like we all just need some good laughter right now. I know I certainly do. Last week was full of sadness for me, especially when the announcement came out that the rest of the year is going to be online. So I figure enough is enough. We have to do some laughing. So we have a bunch of awesome assignments. Also, Rue is hiding back here because she was... <laughs> I'll see if I can pull her out in a minute. She was uh, getting a little shrieky earlier, so I just put her on my shoulder. Uh, probably because the air conditioner is on and she's sitting right under the cold and it's probably like, get me out of here, it's freezing. So anyway, we have a bunch of really fun assignments this week. Um, uh, a laugh challenge, see if you can watch without laughing. And a really fun game that I used to play as a kid um, that will also include some fun laughs. Also, here's my special shirt. Can you see it? I gotta sit up a little bit. Life makes me happy. And uh, if you guys remember, I wore this shirt after the concert. This is my uh, traditional post-concert shirt. I wear it the day after the concert because I'm always so happy when the concert's half over because it's a load of stress off my mind and it just normally goes so well and it's just a party the day after. So, but I figure we need to pull out the Life Makes Me Happy shirt because we need a little bit of happiness right now. So, um, today, I have a few silly poems I would like to read to you. And, well, I'll save this for just a second. So, a few funny poems that I was read as a kid, and, um, and then I'll read you something else at the end. So, here we go. And, Rue, you good up there? Can we try and move you over? Come here, step up. See if I can put her in here so you can see her. Get her perch. Good bird. Good girl. The air conditioning just turned off. Maybe she'll be fine. All right, here we go. So well, let's, this takes a little bit of finagling. I, my printer doesn't work, and um, I don't have these poem books, so I put together something on my, or on my computer. So let's see if we can read it together. Ready? And I'll flip it down just a little bit, and hopefully we can keep Rue in the picture while I'm reading this. Here we go. Oh, and first of all, this first poem, um, how many of you know somebody who doesn't sing very well, but sings very loud, if you know what I mean. So this poem, Rue, yeah, this poem is about somebody who does just that. Euphonica Jar by Jack Prelutsky. Euphonica Jar has a voice that's bizarre, but Euphonica warbles all day. As window panes shatter and chefs spoil the batter and mannequins moan with dismay. Mighty ships run aground at her horrible sound. Pretty pictures fall out of their frames. Trees drop off their branches, rocks start avalanches, and flower beds burst into flames. When she opens her mouth, even eagles head south. Little fish truly wish they could drown. The buzzards all hover and tires take cover, and rats pack their bags and leave town. Milk turns into butter and butterflies mutter and bees look for something to sting. Pigs peel off their skins and tornado begins when Euphonica Jar starts to sing. <laughs> Sounds pretty awful to me. Let's do the next one. The Ella Telephony by Laura Elizabeth Richards. Once, Rue, there was an elephant who tried to use the telephant. No, 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 I mean an elephone who tried to use the telephone. Oh dear me, I'm not certain quite even now that I've got it right. However it was, he got his trunk and tangled in the telefunk. The more he tried to get it free, the louder buzzed the telephy. Oh, I fear I'd better drop the song of elephop and telephone. <laughs> Don't know that that phone call was really successful. Next one, my doggy ate my essay. Be honest, how many of you have used that excuse before? Anybody? Nobody? Well, check it out. What actually happens when your dog eats your essay? When your dog eats your essay? Ooh, are you getting so anxious? You'll be fine. Ready? <laughs> she wants to fly back to her cage. We'll see if she does. She may just take off and go home. Oh, nope, she might listen. We'll find out. My doggy ate my essay. My doggy ate my essay. 
He picked up all my mail. He cleaned my dirty closet and dusted with his tail. He straightened out my posters and swept my wooden floor. My parents almost fainted when he fixed my bedroom door. I did not try to stop him. He made my windows shine. My room looked like a palace and my dresser smelled like pine. He fluffed up every pillow. He folded all my clothes. He even cleaned my fish tank with a toothbrush and a hose. I thought it was amazing to see him use a broom. I'm glad he ate my essay on how to clean my room. Pretty good, huh? Now, go back and re-listen to that poem and take notes. So when your mom or dad says, go clean your room, go do all that stuff. Right? Right. <laughs> all right, uh, let's do last one. Be glad your nose is on your face. Be glad your nose is on your face, not pasted to some other place. Oh, and I forgot to say, when I read you this poem, I want you to use your imagination to picture your nose being on different parts of your body. You ready? Let's try again. Be glad your nose is on your face, not pasted on some other place. For if it were where it is not, you might dislike your nose a lot. Imagine if your precious nose were sandwiched in between your toes. That clearly would not be a treat, for you'd be forced to smell your feet. Ugh. Your nose would be a source of dread were it attached to top your head. It soon would drive you to despair, forever tickled by your hair. Within your ear, your nose would be an absolute catastrophe. For when you were obliged to sneeze, your brain would rattle from the breeze. That sounds really uncomfortable. Your nose instead, through thick and thin, remains between your eyes and chin, not pasted on some other place. Be glad your nose is on your face. All right. So, I hope those poems gave you a few giggles. All right, I'm glitching the video because I had to go put Rue to bed. She was starting to get really tired and cranky. And uh, here we are again. So um, I've been debating whether or not to read this to you just because it's not finished yet. But considering it's laughing week, I feel like I'm going to go for broke. Why not? And also, I'm hesitant to read this because then I have to promise that I'll finish it before the end of the school year so I can read you the ending. But it would probably be a good thing for me to do. So, here we go. So this is a story that I wrote when I was in eighth grade. And I figured you guys would have fun listening to it. Um, this is the story of the gingerbread man. Now, for those of you who haven't heard the story of the gingerbread man, 30 second version, okay? So there's an old man and an old woman who live in a cottage or something, and this story kind of changes every once in a while. And um, she decides, this old woman decides to make the old man a treat and makes him a gingerbread man. And the little gingerbread man is a little stinker, and he jumps off the tray and runs away and says, run, run as fast as you can, you can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread man, right? So he's a little stinker. And every tries to catch him, he always gets away. And he ends up getting eaten um, by a fox at the end. Um, because uh, he needs to go run across the river, but he knows he's going to melt because he's just a gingerbread cookie. And so this fox very slyly says, oh, I'll take you across the river on my back. And the gingerbread man is like, sure, that sounds good. And he gets on the fox's back and he paddles him halfway across and then tosses him up in the air and eats him. And that's the end of the gingerbread man. So now that you know the original version of the gingerbread story or the gingerbread man story, I want to read you uh, my version, my eighth grade version of the gingerbread man. And unfortunately there's no, there's no pictures because I didn't draw any pictures for it, but, um, there's some fun fonts. See that? So there's a bunch of different voices and it's all marked up because my teacher graded it. So this was a, my final in, uh, uh, for one of the quarters in eighth grade. So here we go. The gingerbread man. That dumb. There it is. That's just down here. The gingerbread man. Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, there lived an old man and his old wife in an old, lonely cottage in the middle of an old, tall, dense forest. 
They loved each other very much, and one day the old woman decided, decided to surprise the old man and make him his favorite treat, a gingerbread man. When the old man came back from his daily gathering of firewood, the old woman opened up the oven to show him the surprise when, all of a sudden, the gingerbread man leapt out of the oven and ran away singing, run, run, as fast as you can, you can't catch me, I'm the, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait just one minute. Do you see something wrong here? No? Well, I certainly do. I'm being made to look like a little troublesome squirt. Run, run, as fast as you can, you can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread man. What kind of, what, what kind of dorky catchphrase is that? Come on. An old man and old woman? Pfft, when did they come in? It wasn't an old woman trying to surprise an old man. It was a disturbed servant trying to assassinate the king. I don't know why they were trying to get rid of him. I thought he was pretty agreeable. Who wrote this? What kind of baloney are they trying to pollute innocent people's minds with? I'm not the bad guy here. For centuries, I have looked like the antagonist, and I'm sick of it. It's time for a change. It's time to know the real story of the gingerbread man. It's time for the truth. Now let's start this over again, the right way. Once upon a time in, and let's quit the once upon a time, okay? Okay. Oh, before we start, you've got to be corrected on one huge error. This didn't start off in the small cottage, call it, blah, blah, blah. This didn't start off in the small cottage in the middle of nowhere. This all really began in one of the lower rooms of a castle in the kingdom of Amaralia, in the middle of the country of Melisur, the most busy and populated area on the planet. Now that we've got that little misunderstood, misunderstanding cleared up, let's begin. <clears throat> for the last time, I don't like blueberry. I told you I asked for poppy seed. Okay, so maybe the king was a little picky. Take it back and get me the right one. I demand to have my poppy seed muffin for breakfast, and if you continue to make this mistake, I shall have you beheaded. The poor servant man hurried from the room, just managing to dodge the breakfast tray hurled at him from behind. He'd gotten quite good at it, for this was a daily routine. As the man walked back to the royal kitchens for the poppy seed muffin, as also was routine, he was grumbling under his breath. If a mouse had been in the corner nibbling cheese and happened to catch the man walking past, he might have heard something like so. Poppy seed muffins, poppy seed muffins. Is that all he'll eat? I'm sick of running back and forth, back and forth every morning to fetch his precious poppy seed muffins. One day, I swear, I'll put poison in one of the... At this moment, he stops. For it was this last statement he just made that gives him an idea. A little laugh with a touch of mania bubbled up and out, and he dashed madly to the kitchen. For five minutes, he scraped hither and thither, mixing ingredients together. Then he carefully placed the contents on a pan, set the electric oven to 375 degrees, and slid the pan in. Ding! The man leapt up and, snatching a hot pad, he retrieved the pan and slid the baked pastry onto a plate next to the beloved poppy seed muffin. Giggling like a malicious schoolboy, he skittered back to his majesty's quarters. Archibald! The servant man winced as he entered. Archibald, you blithering nimrod, do you want your king to suffer from lack of food and die in his own castle because his servants were lazy sloths? Beg pardon for my tardiness, my lord, but I brought his majesty a little treat, Archibald humbly replied. Oh, um, well then, the king looked quite baffled. Place it on the table. Watch carefully, this is where I come in. Archibald did as he was bid with a sly smile lurking under his bland features. I'll probably never taste that teaspoon of nitroglycerin I put in that gingerbread man. I heard him and I knew that I was meant to kill the king and I couldn't do that. So when his back was turned, I simply jumped off the plate and ran out of the door. Archibald spotted me as I toddled down the hallway and roared, lunging after me, Stop that gingerbread man! Immediately the castle was in total chaos. Servants, royal cooks, royal dukes, and royal royal guys were all bumping in and bouncing off of each other, considering some of their girths, like enormous pink bouncy balls. Thankfully, amid the brouhaha, I slipped in between a few barrels and stayed there until the bluster blew over and it was safe to come out. I peeked around the corner to make sure the coast was clear and took off for the door as fast as my two-inch lean and mean legs would carry me. And behind me, I heard the maniacal laughter of Archibald, adding flight to my already speedy steps. Run, run as fast as you can. You'll never escape me, you gingerbread man. 
I ran, ran as fast as I could, and I finally made it to the door. I leapt up with superhuman strength, grabbed the doorknob, swung myself hard, and heard the gratifying click of the latch unhooking. The door creaked open and slowly I the door creaked open slowly and I flung myself outside and ran down the old lonely road to the village below. That night I couldn't find anywhere to spend the night and after being chased by neighborhood guard dogs, having my buttons ripped off by the town children and trying to ask the hotel manager if I could have a room, but deciding to leave after he turned pale and passed out, I settled with sleeping in a hole in a tree with a squirrel named Tucker. Tucker was very hospitable and in the morning we had acorns for breakfast after having acorns for dinner the night before. Then he packed me a whole bag of food for the rest of my journey. You probably already guessed it, they were acorns. And after thanking him for the wonderful stay, I left. As I headed off down the road, I suddenly realized I had no idea where I was going. The only life I'd ever known was at the castle and I hadn't had much experience otherwise, but I suppose that it was probably the most experience any gingerbread man had ever had. After pondering long and hard over what I should do next, I decided I should go into town and see if I should get a job. And that's the end so far. <laughs> to be continued. So I decided to pull this out of a, out of the dusty old catacombs of my, my eighth grade binder. Um, and now I have to make you the promise that I will finish it before the year is out so you can see it. So I'll finish it before the year is out so you can hear it. Anyway, I hope that gave you a few chuckles. <laughs> and a little bit of insight into my eighth grade brain. And um, have fun with your activities this week. Laugh a lot. I'm so excited to see what you come up with. Um, again, post your post to Padlet. And then, um, like it says in the, in the instructions, post your best joke to Padlet. Watch at least three more and comment on them. Um, and if you're having trouble posting to Padlet, just shoot me an email and let me know that you guys finished. All right. Let the laughter begin.